In this tutorial, we will control the brightness of an LED with a potentiometer and learn how to use the analog to digital converter of a microcontroller. Hi, my name is Jens and I believe that everybody can learn electronics. Analog to digital converters or ADCs are very useful tools in microcontroller electronics and today's video will show you how easy it is to use them. Here is what you need for this project. A 400 pin breadboard, a USB breadboard power supply, a 4.7 kilo ohm potentiometer, an LED, a 220 ohm resistor, and the PIC 16F1455. You will also need a PIC kit free to program the microcontroller together with a simple five terminal connecting cable. All these items and many more details are listed in the companion article to this video, which you can find on friendlywire.com. Just follow the link in the description. Here is what we want to do. By turning the potentiometer, we want to adjust the brightness of an LED. We have already learned about pulse width modulation, or PWM for short, and how we can use it to adjust the brightness of an LED back in the electronic candle video. So go check that out if you want. Today I want to focus on how we can read out the position of a potentiometer. If you connect the two outer pins to 5 volt and ground, then the center pin, depending on the position of the knob, will be between 0 volt and 5 volt. And this voltage is called an analog voltage because it is neither fully off nor is it fully on. It's something in between. In a previous video I said this, an analog to digital converter or ADC for short takes an analog voltage and converts it into a number. And that's exactly what we will do today. For ADCs, 0 volt corresponds to the number 0 and 5 volt corresponds to a maximum number that is related to the resolution of the ADC. For an 8-bit ADC that would be 255 and for a 10-bit ADC that we will use today that maximum number is 1023. And now we can take that number between 0 and 1023 and feed it into the PWM module that will control the brightness of the LED. But how do we tell the microcontroller to do all that? We need to write a program. If you are new to microcontrollers, go check out my introductory video on that right here. And if you want to learn all the ins and outs of today's project, go check out the companion article that you can find right here. This is how we set up the ADC module of the PIC16F1455. First, we set the ADC conversion speed to rather slow. This increases the accuracy and our application doesn't need a fast conversion since we are not recording any fast signals, we just read out a potentiometer. Then we need to tell the ADC where to store the 10 bits of the ADC value. This is important because the PIC16F1455 is an 8-bit microcontroller and we can only store 8 bits in a single register. This means that the two remaining bits have to be stored somewhere else. The variable ADFM controls that. More on that later. Now we can configure pin RC0 as an analog input pin by first setting its tri-state register to 1 and then enabling the analog features on that pin like this. After that, we need to tell the ADC module that we will use channel AN4, which corresponds to RC0. And then we can turn the ADC module on. We also have to configure the PWM module located at pin RC5 and you can learn more about it in the electronic kernel video as well as the corresponding article on friendlywire.com. Here all we need to know is that these lines here set the PWM resolution to 10 bit at a frequency of around 4 kHz and then turn the PWM module on. The rest of the program is the so-called main loop. This loop is executed over and over again until we switch the power off. First, we read out the ADC value. We can tell the ADC module to start a conversion by setting the bit go to 1 and wait until it is 0 again. And after that, the result is stored in the two 8-bit variables ADResH and ADResL. Let's understand that in a bit more detail. In the PIC16F1455's datasheet, which you can download in the companion article on friendlywire.com, there are these two relevant tables. The first table contains the ADC result and the second table controls the PWM duty cycle, 
which will control the brightness of our LED. Let's focus on the stuff that is important for us right now. Imagine now that the ADC result for some reason is the number 579, which in binary looks like this. There are 10 bits needed to describe this number, and let's highlight the 8 most significant bits in green and the 2 lowest bits in magenta. Cleaning up the tables a bit more, the ADC result is composed like this, with the registers ADRES H and ADRES L taking the values 144 and 192. And once we have these numbers, we can write them into the PWM registers PWM1DCH and PWM1DCL, like that. And back to the main loop, that's exactly what these two lines here accomplish. Finally, this last line here lets our poor controller rest for one millisecond before everything else starts again. Now we can compile this code in the freely available MPLAB 10 integrated development environment and turn this C code into a so-called hex file. If you want, you can also download the hex file directly from my website. See the link in the description to the companion article that has a resources box with many useful links and downloads. We are now ready to flash this hex file onto the PIC16F 1455 controller. To do that, we need to construct this schematic here and connect the PIC16F 1455 to the PICKIT 3 programmer via the lines VDD, VSS, Master Clear, Program Data, and Program Clock. This is how that circuit looks like in real life. Then open the freely available MPLAB 10 integrated programming environment and select the PIC16F 1455. Click on Apply and then select the PIC Kit 3. In the Power tab on the left side, now check the box Power Target Circuit from Tool, then click back on Operate and then click on Connect. Confirm that we want to power the PIC with 5 volt and voila, the PIC 16F 1455 has been detected. Now click on Browse and load the hex file we just compiled a few moments ago. Remember that you can also download the hex file directly from my website. Click on Program, wait a bit, and if all goes well, you should see the message Programming Complete and the hex file is now on the PIC16F 1455. Remove the PIC16F 1455 from the breadboard along with all the other wires because now we're finally ready to assemble the circuit. But before we start building, we have to take a look at the schematic. The PIC16F 1455 sits in the middle and we connect the center pin of our 4.7 kilo ohm potentiometer to pin RC0, which is channel 4 of the internal ADC. The other two pins connect to either VDD or to ground. The LED is driven by the PWM module at RC5. And other than that, we only need to make sure to connect the PIC16F 1455 to plus 5 volt here and to ground here. And that's it. When building the circuit, place the 400 pin breadboard in front of you and make sure that row 1 is at the top. Insert the USB breadboard power supply and check if both jumpers are set to the 5 volt configuration like so and so. When you press the gray button here and connect a USB cable, these vertical lines on both sides of the breadboard will be connected to plus 5 volt and ground. For that reason, we also call them power rails. Then you can insert the PIC16F 1455 like this and make sure the notch here points up and not down. Now it's time to connect it to the power rails. Pin 1 goes to VDD and pin 14 goes to ground, like so. After that, connect pin 5 to the resistor and then insert the anode of the LED in row 26 like that and its cathode goes into the ground rail. And now all that is left is the potentiometer. Its center pin goes to pin 10 of the PIC16F 1455 and its two outer pins get connected to the ground rail and to VDD like this. It doesn't matter which of the outer pins is connected to ground and which one to VDD. It will just flip the direction in which you have to turn the potentiometer to increase the LED brightness. Now you can plug in the USB power cable and control the brightness of the LED with the potentiometer. It is a bit awkward to do it like that, which is why in the end I took a piece of cardboard and mounted the LED and the potentiometer in it. 
and that works a lot better. Microcontrollers are fascinating little devices and you can buy them for just a few dollars each. I think there are many interesting things to understand and if you want to learn more about them, go check out my website friendlywire.com or my other videos right here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what else you want to learn and I will see you next time.